So I've seen some of these videos recently, and I might as well chime in. And it's about um, the vigilant Christian Morio and his heresies, and basically that he denies an eternal hell of eternal torment. And he's basically believes and teaches the Seventh-day Adventist doctrine of annihilation. And I think that's what happened, is that he fell into some of these teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist, and they... Um, they, uh, I'm just at a loss for words right now. I guess they convinced him well enough to believe that what they were teaching is accurate. And I have some teachings, some DVDs I came across once, and I was taking notes from it while I was listening it when I was still pretty new to the faith. Like, you know, probably just after a few months of being saved or whatever. But anyways, there was some pretty convincing arguments, you know, but as I, like, halfway through it, I'm like, uh, I've never really heard this before. It's starting to sound kind of odd, this annihilation saying that, you know, the damned aren't tortured forever in hell. They're not tormented, but they are just extinguished and just, they just cease to be. And I'm like, uh, that doesn't seem right. But, but some of the verses they use and the ways they use them can be convincing. But, you know, there's scriptures that refute that. Anyways... Vigilant uh, Christian Morio has said this before, and he said it on like a Bible study chat where he's like, well, I'm just saying my opinions or whatever. Well, it's bad enough anyways that he would even consider talking about this and teaching it or whatever, but but he continues to do so. So now he, he can't say that anymore as if that was ever excuse to begin with, but now he just keeps coming out with this stuff and he completely rejects an eternal hell you know, among other problems, but that's a big one. That is a big one. And I was listening to this, this Christian, the super Christian guy, uh, who, you know, isn't the best either, but he made this video refuting the Vigilant Christian. I'm just going through listening to it now. And Moria pulls out this verse to try to teach his uh, doctrine of annihilation, and I just think it's just ridiculous, but I'll play it. Stupid. The wicked shall be ashes. Wow. Malachi chapter 4 3, a prophecy. What is it saying? And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet, burnt up by the fires in hell, where their fire, where their soul was killed by God, who can kill. They and us, we did not perish. We did not disappear and, and have eternal life. And it's sad because the majority of Christians... Okay, I accidentally just paused my recording instead of pausing the video again. I'm making a mistake uh, doing that. But anyways, he talks about Malachi. What was it? I have it up here. Malachi, what, chapter 4, verse 3. He also talks about John 3.16, uh, where it says, you know, whoever believes in Jesus shall have everlasting life. And whoever does not, or, you know, basically, whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life and they won't perish. And he says perish means cease to exist, basically. Uh, well, you see, people who are living today on this earth, um, the saved and the lost, it can't really truly be said that the lost are living, okay? The lost aren't living. They don't have life. They don't have eternal life, okay? Yes, they are living in a sense, quote-unquote, they exist, they have an existence, but it's not truly life. And so when a person dies and goes to hell, that is the second death. That is, uh, you know, the wages of sin is death, and it's an eternal death, okay? It's not considered life, even though their conscience for eternity and somehow have an existence it's not um, that they cease to exist, but it's not considered life, okay? So it's just these terms that people get mixed up on, and, um, you know, it should be pretty easy to understand, though. You know, the lost, they're not living. They don't have life, okay? But it could be said that they do have life. So when Jesus says that the wicked perish, you know, it means that it doesn't mean that they cease to exist, okay? Because there are verses that talk about being in torments, okay? 
obviously there's the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the beggar, okay? And the rich man opens his eyes in hell, being in torment, okay? And, and he cries to get out of there. You know, he doesn't cry to get out of there, I guess, but he cries that, you know, other people will be warned of it. And, you know, he begs for a drop of water, basically. And uh, so that's what Jesus said about hell. Pretty much that's what hell is like, never-ending torment. And uh, so he uses this verse, Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. I just wanted to make the video on this because I just thought it was kind of funny. It's not funny, but it's uh, just horrible. I just I hear horrible interpretations. And so it says, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that day that I shall do this, saith the Lord. So they'll be ashes under the soles of your feet. And he uses this to teach that there, that hell is not an eternal torment. It's a... It's a cessation of existence. It's being extinguished. <laughs> Obviously, this is like metaphorical language. I mean, you know, a lot of the prophecy is, a lot of the, the books of the prophets, we got in Malachi here. You know, the verse before that, it says, uh, let's see. Basically... It says, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Okay, the Son of Righteousness, basically speaking of Jesus Christ. Does Jesus have wings? No, this is figurative language. Okay, there's no reason to believe that he has wings. Okay, but it's a symbol of, of comfort and protection. Okay, like a, like a mother eagle with her ing, wings or whatever would, would take her younglings under her wings, okay? So healing in his wings, okay? It's not literal that he has wings, and if you touch them, then you're healed, or something like that. Okay, this is all figurative language. And ye shall go forth and, sh and grow up as calves of the stall. You shall grow up as calves of the stall. So that's a simile, because similes are when you see comparisons that usually use the word as or like. So you will grow up as calves of the stall. That's a simile. And so, you know, that's figurative. Again, that doesn't mean that you turn into calves or something. <laughs> it's not too hard. But, and then we continue on. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. It's not talking about they're literally going to be ashes. And yes, some wicked people might perish in their physical bodies, their physical death in this life. Uh, by burning, and they might literally become ashes, but this is not to be taken literally. This is figuratively, it's just saying that the wicked will be destroyed, they're, they're going to be punished, they're going to meet their doom. Basically talking about in this life, you know, there'll be ashes under the soles of your feet. Uh, also, though, in eternity, you know, they will be doomed, but they will have everlasting torment, okay? It doesn't teach... Uh, that they are extinguished. This is figurative language. It's just a general that the it's just a general idea that the wicked are going to get what's coming to them. Okay, there will be vengeance from the Lord. And Morio says that if you believe uh, eternal torment, that hell is eternal torment, which is what the Bible teaches, then God is not just, which is absolutely wrong uh so he's accusing god of being unjust basically and uh so another a good verse too to use for uh everlasting contempt daniel 12 12 2 says many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Which, thinking about this, just looking at this right now, too, it's very interesting, because a lot of people think that this is later on, there's going to be a physical resurrection of bodies from the graves and stuff. That's not what this is saying, okay? Many of them in the dust of the earth shall awake, okay? Um, which basically means when you die you do wake up on the other side, okay? Uh, just like um, the rich man and the rich man and Lazarus, 
uh, when he he w awoke, basically, he lifted his eyes, and uh, he awoke in torments. Okay, so it doesn't mean that physical bodies are going to be raised. That's not going to happen. That's not what the Bible teaches. It's talking about spiritual awakening. Okay, some to everlasting life, and and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Okay, so you would have to be some kind of a consciousness existence to have everlasting contempt which means like everlasting disdain or like it just said some to shame okay so they're going to awake in the next life some the wicked will awake in the next life spiritually to shame to everlasting shame everlasting contempt okay not um just immediately be extinguished and cease to exist so, uh, I mean, the Bible is pretty clear on this, and uh, God is just. He's an eternal God, and he sent his son to die for everyone's sins. And if you reject that, uh, you sinned against a holy, eternal God. And so the punishment for that, for treading over the sacrifice of Jesus, is eternal damnation, eternal torment, eternal everlasting contempt. Um... There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, unquenchable flames. So, you know, <clears throat> but this is, this, this doctrine that Mario's been teaching is uh, Adventist doctrine, basically, from Ellen G. White. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventists are the biggest ones that teach this, as far as I know. And um, that's probably where he got it from. He fell into that. I'm sure he didn't come up with this on his own. He might have, uh, but he probably came across a website or some teachings and got wrapped up into that. But, uh, yeah, that would just be, that's a big problem of his, but just one of many. But anyways, I need to talk a lot more about the doctrine of hell, but there's a little bit on it there. So, you know, I always say how much you have to understand the figurative language you know, all throughout scripture, you know, I could say it's a lot in the prophets and it is, but you know, it is in the Psalms. There's obviously poetry and uh, Jesus used parables and figurative language. So, uh, so the fact that the wicked will be ashes under our feet is basically just a general idea that, um, the end of the wicked is not good, okay? So, and even though the wicked will continue to exist and and have contempt in the next life, it won't really be it won't really be living, okay? It's death. It's suffering. Um. So it's death in the fullest sense, and it's not life. And those of us who are saved, we have life in the fullest sense. So thank you guys for watching. Beware of this heretic. And uh, the super Christian guy is a Ruckmanite, so he's definitely got problems too, like Brian Denlinger. And you can actually see he's got the Peter Ruckman poster, and he's got all the collection of Peter Ruckman. So he's... Uh, absorbed in Peter Ruckman, so that's unfortunate, but they're both wrong, and they're both false, so God bless.